Uh, I look terrible, as usual. Start everything off with the usual sort of self-hatred. So I think a lot about how I approach these things. I basically do this as a way of blowing off steam and a way of practicing editing, but if I don't do anything different with it, if I don't have anything to really say about the books I'm reading, if I'm just doing this by rote, then kind of what's the point? I'm not putting a lot of like planning or effort into this, so it's never going to be particularly uh, fascinating as long as I don't do that. For now, I'm just going to press forward, and I'm going to continue to do a few very short reviews of the books that I've been reading. Start. Start by John Asif. Asif? I could have looked it up, and I didn't. I read this immediately after reading a writer's block book, and this is very much like a sort of writer's block sort of motivational book. Uh, there's, there's nothing in here that you won't read in a million other places if, like me, you have read all of the books on writer's block ever. But it's useful. Uh, I've read books by this author for this project before. I actually remembered his name because I like the way he writes. He's very good at writing in a way that does not trigger my defensive properties, and he's very good at identifying and immediately diffusing the sort of backlash defenses that I always seem to, to trip into. And there's a lot of anecdotes. This book uses a particular anecdote that I hate, the one about the concert violinist who gets no recognition when he's playing in a subway, because he's playing in a subway. And how this is apparently, like, the fault of the people who are just trying to go places, and not the fault of you're playing in a subway? This book also kind of offers a framework for understanding the different stages of a project. Starting, you're in the middle, you're mastering a thing, you're harvesting whatever. And, and that's useful, because different stages are going to have different challenges. And this also does have one thing which I don't see in a lot of writer's block books, but which is kind of desperately important, and that's a section on how to not fuck over your family when you're attempting your big new thing. It stood out to me because this is a thing that comes up with creative writers and with, um... with self-employed artists. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff about how you need to kind of take the jump, quit your day job, do, do whatever the hell it is you're, you want to do in terms of art and writing, except almost always a person who does that is being supported in some way by their spouse, and it's not always obvious or stated that they are. And that's not just in terms of having a spouse who has a day job who's paying the financial bills, um, I can think of one full-time webcomic artist whose spouse is their, literally their business manager, and who does a hell of a lot of work towards that. Um, there was a Twitter thread recently, amazing to try and cite Twitter threads, about just how many literary authors' wives did all of their typing, literally typed up all of their work, and as a result did a whole lot of proofing and editing and possibly even rewriting work that they were not credited for. So there's this whole slew of famous male literary authors who should have co-editing... Who, <clears throat> whose wives should have co-creator credits in the way we would understand it now. Which makes me think a lot about how it's like traditional to put like your spouse's name in the acknowledgments and thanks section. I wonder if that started because that's actually a form of kind of credit, but not credit, to someone who actually did a, a lion's share of the work. Anyway, my point is, just the fact that this is very explicit and very careful about, hey, let's not have the burden of this ruin your other relationships, it means a lot. It, it, um, it makes the absence of such information stand out in other books. So yeah, if, if you're not completely oversaturated on, um, writer's block, start help books, if, if there's something, if you want to read something, this is going to give you the information that everyone else does in a good, palatable way. Good, good. Yeah, it's been a slow start to the summer reading program, partly because I just read this, and partly because I just bought these. All of these. I don't want to be reading boring self-help books right now, but there's kind of a... Uh, time limit. 
So I'll, I'll do what I can. Short reviews, of, short reviews potentially. Um, gonna start the next book now. I may edit these both together, or even all three together, just for the hell of it. I had to try something new. It's the same day. I read another book. All in one day because it was boring and I wanted to stop reading it. That's kind of a harsh review. Let's go into better detail. This is Extreme You, Step Up, Stand Out, Kick Ass, Repeat, by Sarah Rob O'Hagan. This is a book where if you're motivated to do big things and want to know a way to not fail too hard or to navigate those failures, for you. If you like anecdotes about marketing and people with lots of credits on their names who work at big companies, yeah, for you. If you're not turned off by the usual millennials have an everybody gets a trophy culture and that's bad, you'll do fine. Um, really, this is like 100% anecdotes and a whole lot of like phrases in all caps that are also the titles of things, titles of chapters, and man, I just kind of zoned out fast. Um, it's not bad advice. I, I think I'd still rather transform into a Dragon Quest style slime and sit around on couches and do one point of damage when I hit. Um, I'm not motivated. I think the extremist version of me is still pretty mild-mannered in, in comparison to the extremist version of the people for whom this book is uh, written. Also, it's a, a very kind of specifically styled prose. It's, it's not dry at all. It's very extreme, edgy, what-the-fuck, conversational almost, so maybe that'll do it for you. Maybe it sounds better spoken. I found it a little, a little too much. But, yeah, whatever. I've read a second book. This is a thing I've done. It's like midnight. I could have spent this time working on the Dungeons & Dragons dungeon I'm trying to design. You'll absolutely love it. It is very simple. It has three rooms and two kinds of monsters. I feel like I should have more to say, but I'm not gonna. Until next time. I also drank like an entire pot of, of uh, black tea, so sleep ain't gonna happen.